you're beginning in Shavasana, a version of it. Toes spread, legs are open just a little bit. I have one hand on my heart, one hand on my belly, and I got my eyes closed. I'm just telling you what I'm doing, just in case you want to follow, or if you want to do something else, of course, you're free. So go ahead and begin breathing gently in the nose, out the nose, whatever you came on the mat with, set that ish aside, it's not important. Matter of fact, throw it away or keep it in your mind if you're ready to break a mental limitation. Let's go ahead and bend our knees, stamping our feet into the mat. Make sure they're hip width apart. In order to do this, you can bring the feet together, big toes touching, and then separate the feet from there. Maybe the knees are touching and the toes are pointing towards each other, heels kind of pointing out at an angle. Maybe your feet are at the edges and you're just knocking the knees together. You can do whatever you want to do. Just go ahead and stamp your feet into the mat and still set your breath and your mind on your attention and intention. Now, place your hands on the mat next to your hips, palms flat on the mat, fingers pressing into your mat, arms are engaged, lengthening towards your feet, and breathe deeply. Literally feel your belly push up towards your ceiling and then down towards earth. Gentle inhales and exhales yet with authority and confidence. From here, you can open your eyes or you can still keep them closed. We're about to begin our practice. Breathing deeply, feeling all of the air and a catch of a sound in the chest in your throat. Bending your right knee, bringing the knee towards the chest. Your foot is still pointing somewhere towards the front wall. Make sure your lower back stays flat or as flat as possible. And then let go of your knee. On the next inhales and exhales, slowly, slowly, slowly begin to lengthen your leg towards the ceiling. Nope, your leg is not long yet. It's not lengthened yet. It's still slightly bent and it's still moving slowly. Lengthening, lengthening. With each inhale, rest your body. Exhale, lengthen a little more. A couple more inches, maybe a couple more micro inches, slowly until your leg is as long as it can be, toes pointing up somewhere towards the ceiling. And it doesn't have to be straight up. Maybe it's at a diagonal towards the front wall. Your whole body is very comfortable and relaxed. On the next exhale, lower that long right leg towards the ground. Let it hover. If it has to touch, that's okay. Next exhale, foot lifts back up. Next exhale, foot lowers. Of course, you're taking your inhales, obviously. <laughs> Next exhale, foot lifts back up. Next exhale, lower. With each exhale, belly button gently, friendly, push towards the spine. Next exhale, lift the foot back up. This time, grab onto the calf, maybe the big toe. If your torso says, I can reach it, maybe grabbing a strap. For those who do have a strap, wrap it around the ball of the foot maybe the midline of the foot, and pull that foot towards your forehead, really. The floor behind you, that leg is long. The left leg is not doing anything. Try to keep that left leg calm. Some of us may go into half happy baby. If you want to target different muscles, especially the side hip muscles, you can definitely do that. This will help the inner growing. Or you can lift your leg, lengthen it, and pull those toes down towards the top of your head. And release. Exhale everything out, removing your straps, any props that you have, helping that stretch and coming into figure four, setting that right ankle on top of the left thigh, lifting your left leg so that you can grab the left knee. Maybe some of us will use that strap again and wrap it around the left foot, the ball of the foot, pulling it towards your torso. Now, if you're doing this, some of us may need to wrap around the strap around the foot, but pull with the left arm and making sure the left foot stays towards the midline. Some of us may wrap the strap around the foot and the right arm moves through the hole and the left arm comes to the outside grabbing the straps. It depends on how you grab and hold, but just come into figure four and stretch the right thigh. Releasing that figure four position, 
Removing your straps, lengthen your right leg forward. Still keep that left foot pressing to the mat. And then let's grab a block. Put it underneath your lower back, just above the juice of your glutes. And step your left foot, or really the ball of that left foot into the mat. Lift the heel. A very subtle bridge pose, your first bridge pose of this practice. You can point your toes for the right toes forward or point those right toes towards the ceiling, stamping the ball of the foot into the imaginary front wall. Now stamp your both feet into the mat, coming into a bridge pose, maybe keeping your lower back on the block, maybe lifting your hips up and removing the block. And if you're doing that, go ahead and lift your hips up, remove the block, and set them down back on the mat. Bending your left knee this time, right foot stamps into the mat, keep it where it is. Left knee is pulled towards the chest, and then release your left knee slowly like we were doing for a few moments, Taking our inhales and exhales, taking our time slowing down, teaching ourselves patience as we slowly, patiently, yes, I'm going to keep saying that so that it is etched in your head, slowly, patiently, slowly, patiently, leg lengthens, leg lengthens until the left foot is pointing to the ceiling or somewhere towards the ceiling and the leg is long. You're breathing, holding that leg up. Everything is solid and secure within. Your intention is still manifest. Go ahead and grab your strap if you want. If your arms are long enough or maybe your legs are short enough, you can grab the big toe or the calf muscle. And like we did on the right side, let's pull that leg down on the left, strap or not. Toes are coming somewhere behind you towards the ground. They don't have to stretch to where I'm stretching. It could be an inch. That's fine. As long as you feel something, you have to feel something. You have to challenge yourself. There's no challenge, there is no growth. Taking one last inhale, and exhale it out, release that stretch, bring your left ankle on top of the right thigh, stepping that, or I should say lifting your right foot so that you can grab that right knee. That left ankle is still on top of the right thigh, and you're grabbing the right knee, maybe using the strap as we did on the left side, wrapping that strap around your foot or not. Whatever you need to do to pull that knee a little closer so you can stretch the outside of the left thigh, do it. This is your practice, your growth. This is your ascension. Now place a block underneath your lower back at the lowest level, maybe the mid level. And then that left leg stretches forward, stamping the ball of the right foot into the mat, bringing that heel a little closer to the right glute, lifting that right heel. And this is another bridge. Take your time and feel the lift of the pelvic floor muscles. Feel your pelvis lift towards the ceiling. This is what is most important. Well, really not most important, but in this position that we're in right now, this is very important. Set your awareness on lifting your pelvis. Eventually, you release yourself from bridge pose and then turn over on your right side, laying down as if you're sleeping. Bend your knees or go ahead and lengthen your feet towards the front of the mat. Your whole body is facing the right this time. Picking yourself up by the torso using your hands so that now you're sitting up but you're still facing the right wall. Knees are bent or not. Left foot in front of the right foot. Legs are long. Right hand presses into the mat. Left arm reaches up to the ceiling and then palm is facing up. You're bending to your left hip, looking to the right arm or somewhere towards your right arm. Up, maybe down. This is stretching the right side of the body from the hip to the shoulders. I mean, it's a good stretch. We release infinity pose, which is what that is. And we're coming to a seat on our glutes, butterfly legs, bringing the soles of the feet together, shaking it out, wiggling the knees, shaking the shoulders if you want. Grab onto your ankles, maybe put blocks underneath both thighs. Make sure the knees are descending towards the mat as best as possible. 
Right arm reaches over to the right, fingers pressing into the floor. Left arm reaches up and over towards the right wall. On the next exhale, swipe that left arm forward, down, circling it back up, reaching over towards the right wall. So we're making a circle with the left arm. Keep the right fingers down. Again, circle that left arm forward, down, circling it towards the left and up. And again, on the next exhale, circle that left arm. And one more time, circling that left arm down, forward, towards the left. And this time, place that left hand behind you somewhere. Both hands are on the mat behind you or on the floor behind you. You're kind of twisting to the left. Still butterfly legs, but it's a slight spinal twist. Arms are somewhere behind you, pressing into the mat with the fingertips. Shoulder blades squeezing slightly, but both hips remain on the mat. Release, looking forward. Open the arms. Exhale, hug yourself. Inhale, open your arms wide. Exhale, hug yourself. Give yourself a lot of love. Inhale, open your arms wide. Exhale, come into eagle arms. One elbow on top of the other. Remember the place of the elbows here. Now, if it's hard for you to bring your, hand, your arms into eagle arms, which is one elbow over the other, chest is slightly compressed, squeezing. And if you're using a strap, just bring your bottom hand grabbing, both hands grabbing the strap, of course. The bottom hand is coming closer to the top hand. Now, inhale, lift your knee, still butterfly. Exhale, fold with your eagle arms, relax your shoulders. Inhale, lift your knees, still butterfly. Exhale, kind of bend back. If you like, you can lift your eagle arms up or you can just go ahead and fold. Bring yourself back up. Inhale, knees come a little close towards each other. Hips remain flat, shoulders relax. Bend the upper back, maybe looking up with your eagle arms. The hands are kind of falling away from the nose. And exhale, fold towards your feet. Now, in this fold, you can rest your elbows on top of a block, place the block on top of the feet, still butterfly, of course. Or you can remove the block, maybe set it at a lower level or remove it fully and bring your eagle, eagle arms closer to your heels. For some of us, this may get a little uncomfortable for the knees and the thighs and the inner growing. So to just put all of those worries to rest, place blocks underneath your thighs. Releasing the fold, releasing your eagle arms, open the arms wide this time. Wide, wide, wide. Straighten your feet out, your legs out, releasing butterfly. Now the bottoms of the feet are facing forward, toes pointing up. We're going to fold from here. Starting, you may bend your knees, heels pressing into the floor, and then begin to fold your torso until it can hang above the thighs. Maybe the chest comes very close to your thighs. Maybe you're placing a block underneath your forehead because eventually you will be able to round your back. Eventually you can't fold anymore. And at that point, you can go ahead and round your spine, placing a block underneath the forehead, maybe placing one fist on top of the other, resting your head on top of that. Releasing your forward fold and slowly rolling down laying on your back, bending your knees, stamping your feet into the mat. We're gonna come into bridge pose. Let's place a block underneath the lower back here just above the glute muscles. You can stay here or we're going to take it up a notch. Now, keep that block underneath your lower back or lift your pelvis up and keep it maintained at a, dis at a height, a healthy height, of course, a confident height, a height for your pelvis that doesn't compromise anything else. You're removing the block and now we're in bridge pose. Lifting the hips higher by the glutes, squeezing the glutes together. The lower back is not strained. 
Your chest is lifting closer towards your chin. It's not the chin moving to the chest. It's really the heart moving towards your third eye. Press your arms into the mat. Palms are flat into the mat. Fingers facing forward. Feet are about hip width apart. Knees are not over the toes. They're not behind the heels. They're just above the heels. You're lifting, you're breathing, you're still intending to your mind. You're allowing the thoughts to come and go because they don't serve you in this moment. Exhale, lower your hips slowly to the mat. Bend your right knee in towards your chest. And then on the next exhale, lift the right foot up towards the ceiling. Leg is long and lift the hip up into bridge again. Now you can place a block underneath your lower back if this helps. If you really want a challenge, remove the block and lift your hips using the power of the left thigh. Leg, that right leg is long. Exhale, lower the right heel towards the mat. Leg is long, still in bridge. Inhale, right leg lifts up. Lift the pelvis. Exhale, lower the leg down. Left leg is working. Inhale, right leg lifts back up. Exhale, lower that right leg down. Toes spread. Inhale, lift the right leg back up. And then exhale, set that right ankle on top of the left thigh. You're still in bridge. You are still in bridge. The hips are lifting. Challenge yourself. You got this. You can stay here with the palms pressing into the mat or both palms come on top of that leg, the right leg. Maybe the left arm on the left thigh, the right hand on the right knee. Hips lower to the mat, keep the placement of the feet, and go ahead and pull that left knee in towards the chest. Hmm. Release, the left foot down, stretch that right thigh, the hamstrings, grabbing onto the calf, maybe grabbing your strap and pulling that foot towards the top of the head as we were doing in the first round of this practice. Release the right leg. Place a block underneath your hips. Stamp that left foot into the mat. The right leg is long towards the front wall. Now, from here, with that block on your lower back, stamp the ball of the left foot into the mat. This time, arms may shoot overhead and rest on the floor. Palms still facing up. You're allowing the lower back to release stress right here while the pelvis and your pelvic muscles are resting on support. Lift up, release the block or not. You can keep that block underneath your lower back, but if you're coming with me, release the block. Let's come into bridge pose again. Palms pressing into the mat, feet pressing into the mat. Make sure the heels and the toes are parallel to each other. Hips lift, work that core. You can even, for some of us, if the elbows and the arms and the lower back says, okay, we can place our palms underneath the lower back, squeezing the shoulder blades together, walking those shoulder blades together and the elbows together. If not, just go ahead and lifting your arms forward on the mat. Regardless of where you are, shoulder blades are squeezing together, walking together to lift the hips even more. And on the next exhale, let's lower down, slowly release, bringing the left knee towards the chest. Give a good, gentle pull. Keep breathing and flowing with intention. Left leg shoots up to the sky, lifting the hips up again in bridge, lower back, supported on a block or not. Exhale, lower that left heel towards the mat. Inhale, lift back up. Power in the right thigh. Exhale, lower the left heel towards the mat. Leg is long. Inhale, lift it right back up. Lower, exhale. Heel hovers above the floor. One more time. Inhale, raise that leg again. Reach it up to the sky or the ceiling. And then exhale, bring the left heel, left ankle area on top of the right thigh as we did before. Lift your hips even higher. Bring your heart closer to your chest. Don't squeeze your shoulders and your neck. You can bring both hands on top of the thigh here. Bring the left hand and the right hand to come grabbing, laying on top of that left ankle, shin area. And then exhale, rest. Lower your hips, but keep the shape of the legs, grabbing the right knee, pulling it in towards your heart. Release the knee. 
Right foot stamps into the mat. Left leg lifts up high again, grabbing the shin, big toe, or with the strap, the middle of the foot, ball of the foot area, and lower that leg, stretching the glutes, the hamstrings, your IT bands. Making sure the toes are pointing to the ground so you can stretch the fascia of the foot. Very good. Very, very good. Now, go ahead and place a block underneath your lower back as you've been doing. Stretch your left leg forward. Stamp the right ball of the foot into the mat, bringing the right heel a little closer to the glute. Make sure that left leg is long. I want you to fully engage your stretch from toes to the tops of the fingertips with your arms resting next to your ears flat on the floor. Please find your intention again, which simply means come back to why you came to this mat. Come back to what you want to break. Mental limitations, any negativity, any thought process that needs to go, maybe be relaxed. Release this bridge, release everything, and lay on your left side. Now you're facing the left wall, which is, it's like you're sleeping. Legs extend forward towards the front of the mat, still laying on the left side. Pick yourself up, you can bend the knees or not. This time, if you're not bending the knees, right foot directly in front of the left foot. Make sure the legs are staying close together. Left palm sits on the mat, pressing the palm into the mat, right arm overhead. Palm facing up, looking to the left, over that left arm, stretching the left side of the body this time. The right hip is coming somewhere towards the right side, right abdominal area. A good infinity stretch. Release infinity pose this time. Come into butterfly position. Go ahead and shake the legs out. Shake, shake, shake. Pressing the balls of the feet together. Now, left palm pressing in the floor, somewhere towards the left. Right arm reaches up overhead. Kind of slight curvature in that left side of the body. Exhale, swoop the right arm forward, down, making an arc, making a circle, reaching back overhead. Do it again. Exhale, circling the hand forward, down, to the right and up, reaching overhead towards the left. Now you swipe again, making that circle. Inhale, your arm is back up. Exhale, swipe again, circling the arm down until that right arm comes somewhere behind you. And you're going to turn your torso, make sure your arms are placed somewhere behind you long, fingertips stamp. And the torso kind of turns to the right, but the legs stay the same. The legs are forward, but the torso is to the right. So it's a slight sitting twist for the spine. You're looking up or down. Looking down, of course, this helps your neck. Give some calm, some peace to the right side of the neck. Release that hold. Arms open wide. Exhale, arms close. Hug yourself. Inhale, arms wide. Exhale, arms close. Maybe you hug yourself. Inhale again, wide. Exhale, eagle arms. Now, whichever arm was on top last time, this time that arm will be on the bottom. Of course, use your straps. The hands move away from the nose. The elbows pick up so that your arms try to come as parallel to your mat. Inhale, kind of bend back with the upper back, looking up somewhere. Exhale, hold your eagle arms and fold just a little bit. Bring your elbows a little closer to the feet. Inhale, reach up with the arms, look back slightly, exhale, fold, and this time move the hands forward. Keep your eagle arms, you're just going to move the hands forward just a couple inches, and then back to its original position. Lift your torso up, inhale, bend the upper back, looking up, exhale, maintain your arms, fold, and this time bring your hands, just move them forward towards the front wall. Release, inhale. Upper back bend, belly button to spine, core is engaged to maintain the structure of your spine. Exhale, fold, maybe hands move forward, back. And this time come into a deep, deep fold. As, fold, as deep as you can get, blocks are at play here if necessary.
Eventually, you come back up, release your eagle arms slowly, slowly widen your arms, and then straighten the legs out in front of you. Knees touching, maybe big toes touching, arms are open wide here. Straighten your spine, take a deep inhale, let that belly push out. Exhale, allow the belly to push in towards the spine as your hands come towards your feet. Now bring your strap into play here. We're gonna come into a forward fold, but of course your own forward fold that works. You can watch me as I do this for a moment. I'm just wrapping my strap around my feet and I'm grabbing one hand over the other, grabbing the strap, and you can go into your fold from there. You can release your strap and one hand to the opposite foot, to the outside of that opposite foot, or the other hand. So you can fold single-handed and then when you're ready, for the other side, go ahead. You can crisscross your arms as I'm doing, bending the knees, stamping the heels into the, free, the floor, bringing your heels closer to your glutes. Sit yourself upright, and then you can slowly heel toe, heel toe, maybe heel walk, heel walk, your feet towards the front until your legs are straightened. You see? So that's why we take it slow, take your time, Take your time. Bridges are not made in a day. Take your time. Slowly fold. And remember for all the folds that you do in the history of the rest of your life, <laughs> whenever you're doing yoga on the mat, make sure you always inhale, prepare, exhale, enter. So inhale, extend your body, exhale, Go a couple inches in your fold, maybe a micro inch. Just make a move on your exhale or remain still. If you're crisscrossing your arms or doing one-handed folds, go ahead and switch your arms, switch your crisscross and fold again. Forehead comes towards your shins or your knees or your thighs. The top of your head is shooting forward. So make sure your shoulders are relaxed and your elbows are bent or make sure your elbows are not locked. Release your fold and slowly roll onto your back. Now you're facing the ceiling. We're gonna enter bridge pose again. Bring the lower back on top of a block or not. Lift your hips, you know what to do. Engage your thighs, engage your glutes, squeeze those glutes together, but not too tight. Now, if you really wanna ante up the challenge, no block. If that's too much, Put a block underneath your lower back. Right heel comes close to the right glute. Lift the heel up. Left leg lifts up to the sky. Now, you can bring the right hand directly next to the right ear as if you're about to enter real pose. So, the palm of the right hand is flat on the mat or as flat as it can be next to the right ear. The left arm is shooting forward, resting on the mat. Inhale, lower that left leg. Exhale, lift the left leg back up, long. Inhale, lower the leg, hover it above the mat. Exhale, lift the left leg, long. Inhale, lower, there's power in that right thigh. Exhale, lift the left leg. Release that right arm so that is parallel to the left. Set the hips down, go ahead and release the left leg to the ground, release the right heel, just bring yourself all the way to the ground, but the left leg is long towards the front wall, and bend that right knee, bring it towards the forehead, lift the head up so that that forehead can come close to that right knee, and let's come into spinal twist on the next exhale. Bring the right knee over to the left floor, or I should say the left side of your mat towards the ground. Of course, block underneath that right knee. Make sure both shoulders are coming as close to the ground as they can, especially that right shoulder. And if it's not reaching the ground, you may have to lift that right knee a little more. You may have to unfurl just a little more. You do not need to do a deep cervical twist in order to get the benefits that you need. You deserve everything good. So give yourself time to seep into what blessings may come forth. Release yourself from spinal twist. Come into bridge again, lift the heels, a high bridge here, bringing the heels a little closer to the glutes, and then right leg lifts up to the sky. Of course, back on the on a block right here, 
Bring the left hand into half wheel as if you're about to enter wheel pose. So the left palm is stamping to the mat next to the left ear, elbow shooting to the sky, right arm flat on the mat shooting forward. Inhale, right leg down, hovers. Exhale, bring it back up. Inhale, right leg is long and down, left leg is strong. Exhale, bring the right leg back up. Left heel lifts high. Inhale, right leg down, hovering. Exhale, right leg up. Press the right palm into the mat. Keep that arm strong. And then release that left hand from its half wheel preparation. Lower the hips. Release the left heel. Right leg down to the ground. Long and bring the left in on the next exhale towards your chest. Some of us may be able to lift the forehead towards the knee. Of course you can do that. Release that hold and let's do spinal twists. Left knee to the outside of the right mat or to the right side of the mat, whatever that means for you and the size of your mat. Arms are wide, maybe the fingers interlace and you're looking up. Maybe you're looking over to the left. Just make sure that left leg is long and it's relaxed. It's really the right knee that is coming closer to the ground and it's really the left shoulder that is pulling itself towards the ground. So edge your way into comfort with your breath. You will release yourself from spinal twist and then pull the knees in towards the chest with your flat back on the mat and you're rocking side to side, side to side, still taking deep inhales and exhales with your lips sealed. Happy baby. Open the feet, open the knees so that the knees are coming towards the armpits. Maybe you're holding on to the thighs, the backs of the knees, maybe the calf muscles, whatever works for you. Some of us are holding on to the big toes, the bottoms of the feet, but we're still rocking side to side. The lower back remains on the mat as flat as it can. Take your deep inhale. And exhale it out the mouth. You can do that again if you want. Feel the vibration of your spine if you're not. And then everyone release happy baby. Uh, circle your knees one way or another, together or separate. Just make some hip movements, lubricate your hip joints here because we put a lot of work into that even though it's only a 40 minute practice and we only did a few bridges, you still put in a lot of work and your cells have been enhanced. And whenever you're ready, release your body into your final resting pose, whatever that may be. It could be Shavasana, it could be something else. Take up space, let your intention flow in, See, smell, taste, touch, hear, feel the manifestation of what you came here for. And release.
Wake yourself slowly. Toes begin to wiggle. Fingers begin to wiggle. Eyebrows. Nose. Lips. Knees bend. Feet placed on the mat now. Release yourself from your final resting pose and let's shift over to either side of your mat, resting like you're sleeping. And pick yourself up into a sitting position or coming with me, coming into a few cat cows. Your hips are over the knees, shoulders over the wrists, elbows are soft. Inhale, lift your spine, chin towards the chest. Exhale, drop the spine, belly button towards the spine, look forward or up. Inhale, round, keep your hips and your shoulders where they are. Exhale, arch. Inhale, round, your toes are flat or balls of the feet stamped. Exhale, arch. Inhale, round your spine, really lift it up by the middle. Exhale, arch. Release into child's pose. And release the limitations in mind, body, and spirit. Ashe, Ashe. Stay here for as long as you like. Ashe.